The two winters Thoreau spent at Walden were long and hard. But winter seemed merely to offer him another reason to exalt nature and its eternal processes. Take long walks in stormy weather or through deep snows in the fields and woods if you would keep your spirits up. Deal with brute nature. Be cold and hungry and weary. Finally, the ice begins to crack and thaw. The signal spring has arrived, the promise of renewal. Thoreau describes it with a sentence that echoes accounts of the original Easter. Walden was dead and is alive again. It is glorious to behold this ribbon of water sparkling in the sun, the bare face of the pond full of glee and youth. It's Thoreau himself coming alive again with the spring, and hopefully by this time the reader too is finding new spiritual growth, new inspiration for his life as well from having read this book. In 1847, Thoreau left Walden and re-entered society. I left the woods for as good a reason as I went there. Perhaps it seemed to me that I had several more lives to live and could not spare any more time for that one. It is remarkable how easily and insensibly we fall into a particular route and make a beaten track for ourselves. He had other lives to live and books to write. So he returned to Concord where he spent seven years writing and rewriting Walden. The book became not only about the Walden experience, but uh, came to be about uh, Thoreau's life and and struggles and challenges uh, and victories uh, in the time between when he came back from Walden Pond uh, and when he finally published the book. That was 1854. He had already published Civil Disobedience in 1849 and lived long enough to see the issue of slavery ignite a civil war. In 1862, the year of the Emancipation Proclamation, Thoreau developed tuberculosis. He was dying, but his wit had not noticeably dimmed. When someone asked if he'd made his peace with God, he replied, we never quarreled. 